what will Elon's Twitter takeover actually mean for things like political discourse here in the U.S. and beyond? Well, let's get into it with tonight's party panel. We've got host of Fox Across America on Fox News Radio. He's tan rested and ready, Jimmy Fallon. And we've got former Biden campaign surrogate and Democrat strategist. Uh, his heart is as blue as the Twitter bird. It's Kevin you Wallen. Believe it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and foundation for economic education content manager and based politics co founder, Hannah Cox. Uh, everyone Ooh. is delightful, and I don't know how delighted people are, Jimmy, but can you explain the diversity in reaction to the fact that this deal was finalized today? Well, I love the dichotomy of this so much because everyone freaking out about Elon Musk buying Twitter drives a Tesla. So there's a little bit of a weird hypocrisy because they were all his best friends like a year ago. And now they're like, what do you mean, free speech? We hate this. But Brian Stelter, my God, to your earlier point, he's never been invited to a party, not even his own birthday party. I'm pretty sure Mrs. Stelter had the kids over and ate cupcakes without him and told Brian to go somewhere else. But the truth Brian, is... Brian, go to your room. Your yeah. friends and I want to eat cupcakes. You so love true. So true. But we're all going to benefit from this in the long run. It'll be one of those moments like, do you remember with net neutrality and everything else, people were literally going to die yeah. and now we never talk about it again. We're all going to be fine. We might laugh ourselves to death tonight reading hot takes from like Elizabeth Warren mm -hmm. and people like that. But it's a net win for America. And congratulations to Elon Musk on fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming Tom from MySpace. Now we're all <laughs> your friends. Whatever happened to him? Uh, uh, he is everyone's friend. There. So are you excited for former President Trump to come back to Twitter, Kevin? That'll be a, uh, a lot for the left to react to. I'm yeah. actually excited because this is exactly the boost that you needed ahead of the midterms. With less than 200 days left into the midterms, I'm ecstatic to have Donald Trump back on that platform, taking pot shots <laughs> yes. at everybody in primary elections. Bring it on. Let's, <laughs> I, I, I'll create his account right now tonight. Uh, I'd love to have him back on. Uh, but again, I, there's so much hand-wringing, especially on the left. Let's wait and see what happens. I, you know, I, I'm all about free speech. We've had these debates before. Uh, I love the First Amendment. Let's bring everyone back on. Uh, obviously, we have to draw some lines when it comes to violence and hate speech and things like that. Uh, but, I, you know, again, everyone's freaking out, especially on the left, uh, and I'm just excited to see what happens. All right, so, uh, Hannah, you've been following the reaction uh, online, on social media, on Twitter. What are, people, what are people saying? What is their main gripe with Elon Musk closing this deal? Well, it seems to be the main talking point is that a lot of people on the left think we need more content moderation to protect democracy, which is high key funny if they actually think that that's true that we actually need to censor people and and shut down dissent and prevent open discourse for democracy to flourish that doesn't track whatsoever i think what you're seeing is a lot of people who can't push back on ideas that they disagree with and also cannot defend the ideas that they want to push forward in society and so they have this urge to shut down people and to censor them and to push it away and we see a lot of people on the left including former president obama coming out and saying that this is something we need to do for our society, that our society can't uphold, uphold itself with this open discourse, that our whole system will just come crashing down. <laughs> it's, it's so hyperbolic and ridiculous, but I think it shows you what their game has been all along, which actually is to shut down anybody who disagrees with their narrative. Yeah, but, but uh, Jimmy, that, that's the point of the founding of yeah. the United States of America. That, that's why the First Amendment comes first. Uh, Thank you. So you have the ability to say the things and worship the things and assemble in the ways and, and all of that. They, they put that that is primary, that is implicit in mm -hmm. the, the foundation and expression of the United States. Go ahead, Jim, last word. No, I, I a million percent agree with you. That's why I love this so much, is we're getting back to being America. Uh, you know, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll fight to the death for your right to say it. That even goes for you, Kevin Walling. Which happens every day between the two of us on that platform. Sky, Bring it government. on with your clown Madness, ideas. I don't want to ban you. Oh, I'm just going to fight you. You can't ban me. That's the joy <laughs> now. You but can't you know label hate Jim? speech and make it go away. Ugh. I know, I know you don't like everything that Kevin says, but he has such a pretty mouth that I'm going to allow uh, it. I have oh, always listen. said that. You yeah. you leave my you search history <laughs> out of this. This is a cable news show. <laughs> that was no show. time to go through my laptop. I'm done here. <laughs> okay, you guys are going to stick around because I commend it more with the panel in just a little bit. Uh, coming up next, Secretaries of State and Defense crept into Kyiv over the weekend to deliver millions more in aid to Ukraine. But will the weapons of war ever translate to peace? Congressman Peter Meyer joins me next to discuss.